Now it is widely accepted to be one of the biggest scandals in the history of the NHS. Patients given contaminated blood. Today, the five-year-long inquiry to examine how it happened and whether it could have been prevented came to an end. It's been called the worst treatment disaster in the history of the NHS. Thousands of people infected with HIV and hepatitis between 1970 and 1991 after being given contaminated drugs or blood transfusions. The inquiry into how it happened and crucially whether it could have been prevented began back in 2018. Thousands of documents have been reviewed, testimony heard from hundreds of witnesses, some of the most controversial from those who had been in government. The former Prime Minister, Sir John Major, was roundly criticised for saying the victims had suffered bad luck. What had happened to them was incredibly bad luck. Uh, awful. He later apologised for his choice of language. Kenneth Clark, a Conservative Health Minister and then Health Secretary during the 80s and 90s, upset many families with his views on compensation. You can't just pay out compensation in all those cases where there's no fault on the part of the doctors, there's no part on the fault of the health authority, and there's no fault on the part of the department. The five-year-long inquiry has revealed the full scale of the scandal. Researchers found 380 of those infected with HIV, about one in three, were children. Some of the victims received annual support payments, but prior to the inquiry, no formal compensation was ever awarded. In October, the government did agree to pay interim compensation payments, 4,000 surviving victims and some widows receiving around £100,000 each. But many of the bereaved were not included. Now the chairman of the inquiry will publish an interim report on further compensation in April. His final report is due in the autumn. Well, for decades, families and survivors of the blood scandal have been demanding answers, compensation and a public apology. Sue Threckle lost her husband, Bob, a haemophiliac, in 1991. I spoke to Sue earlier and started by asking her how she felt about the inquiry coming to an end. So it's going to be a real wrench now that the live hearings are over, um, although obviously we'll all be able to meet up when the final report is delivered. Um, I think there's also a, an air of um, great expectation and I suppose a little bit of fear. What do you hope this inquiry will have achieved? My, my main hope is, is for vindication for all those hundreds of people who for the best part of four decades have been saying the same things over and over again and have been pilloried and derided by the likes of government and the pharmaceuticals. Um, you know, we've been made out to be liars. One of the most devastating things must have been hearing that there were warnings about the risks of these products and people knew about the risks and they carried on. It's not rocket science, is it? If you can contract hepatitis from one load of blood donated by one person, what happens when you then factor in another 20 or 30,000 donors? Anybody in the street could understand that that makes it so much more dangerous. It's just basic mathematics. But mm. the fact that you've all had to fight so hard for the inquiry, so hard to get at the truth, that's, that shows the, the failings lasted decades. Yes, the, the, there are definitely two scandals here. The one is what happened in the first place that allowed people to become infected in the first place. But the second scandal is the way that the victims have been treated mainly by the government for the last 40 years. Um, you know, they've been treated like beggars. They've been made to go to charities for grants and then denied them. We've been referred to by the support agencies as the great unwashed. And in one case, the Welsh terrorist. What has been the hardest thing for you personally to hear? My late husband always said that to him, the, 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 the most important aspect of this was the children because he'd had a life and they didn't. I mean, I have two friends still alive today, thank God, who were infected at four years old. Um, but their whole lives have been dictated by this and defined by this. I have another friend whose seven-year-old son died in her arms. And the inquiry did offer up some com compensation to some families, but many bereaved children and loved ones still don't qualify. Do you want that to change? Parents who lost a child have had nothing. 
children who lost a parent like my own children nothing now how can anyone make that judgment how can anyone say that you know my situation because i lost my husband is worthy of compensation yet someone whose child died in their arms at home at seven doesn't get a penny we understand there's been an update um and that there is going to be an interim report looking or outlining we're assuming further compensation widening yes. of the compensation yeah. package i mean yes. is that good news for for you and the other families i think it's very good news yeah because people you know want their loved ones recognized they want to know that their children were important and that their parents mattered sue thrackle thank you so much for talking to us today thank you